Hello flatties and globe defenders, it's Critical Thing from Down Under and uh, after I served up Antonio Subaret's uh, lesson on Horizon Drop he's had a few things to say but obviously it's mostly ridiculous stuff so I'll take a bit of a look at that now. Now Antonio put out another video after that and uh, this is how he tried to weasel his way out of the obvious conclusion from that experiment, which is that the Earth is a globe. And of course, everyone expected him to move the goalposts, and, and yes, that's what he's done. Now, this is incredibly ingenious, I must admit, but it is at the same time incredibly dishonest. And uh, so we'll go through this. Let, let's do you remember this diagram where he said that uh, if you were to look through a tube and the tube was tilted down you'd see the horizon on one side and the sky on the other in a glo on a globe but on a flat earth if you look through the tube you'd see the horizon in either direction well it's pretty much common sense that you would want to be looking down the center of the tube to have this as a valid experiment but of course Antonio didn't say that in his original video and now he's taken advantage of that to move the goalposts and to create an absolute ridiculous situation which the experiment doesn't mean anything at all and I'll show how that's done. Now Antonio has very deceitfully altered the original experiment so that it's no longer capable of distinguishing a flat from globe and so that if you do use do the experiment and uh, find that the earth is a globe which you will then um, he can uh, he has uh, manipulated the success criteria for flat earth so that he can claim the earth is flat even though it is indeed a globe by his own experiment so he's drawn this diagram here and uh, he's not insisting that you look straight down the tube on a flat earth he's saying that you can see uh, if you can see the horizon in both ends of the tube no matter what the camera angle is then the earth must be flat this is of course totally absurd but uh, this is what he must do. He must uh, resort to dishonesty to uh, make uh, the outcome of the experiment fit what his narrative is. Now he's he's drawn these um, ends of the cylinder from one end and from the other, and uh, he's not even done this honestly. He's taken uh, the still shots, the freeze frames out of my video. And he's drawn these ends according to what he saw on on those freeze frames. So when you when you look further into the video here, you'll see what I mean. But can you see how this one on the left has uh, a thicker bottom, and this one on the right has a very thin top, and the the two totally different pictures. But you'll see as we move on that they match exactly or pretty close to. Uh, the pictures he's taken cherry picked out of my video so it's it's not an honest representation of what he's looking for it's a take the results and let's fit the criteria to fit the results which is of course incredibly dishonest and here's uh, the um the looking south now you'll notice that he he's cherry picked a frame here that the horizon in the tube is a little bit above center uh, so he's tried to get as much in favor as he can by cherry picking that particular frame and then of course the other one is an obvious cherry pick uh, with the camera angled down through the tube as i was moving the camera around to try and get it centered in the cube He's taken advantage of that and very dishonestly uh, taken a shot that's angled down through the tube. So what this effectively means is that um, no matter how high you go, 
Uh, all you need is a bigger tube or a shorter tube, and it doesn't matter how much horizon drop you've got, by this criteria, the Earth will always be flat. Now, of course, that's a totally uh, dishonest, a ridiculous, stupid approach. What turned out, what was a very good experiment in the beginning, he's bastardized it um, because it didn't turn out the way he wanted. So uh, these are the, this is uh, a cherry pick of my own, which I've tried to get the shot with the uh, horizon as close to the middle with equal amount of tube, top and bottom. And this is the one that he should be using because it's the closest to a center line down the tube. And of course, the other one, he could very easily have picked this frame uh, with an equal amount of tube, the top and bottom, which clearly shows that there's just sky through the tube, clearly shows that there's a horizon drop right there. But no, he's drawn uh, this diagram, and uh, you'll notice, like I said, the ends of the tube, you can look down through any angle through the tube, and uh, if you see water, horizon, it doesn't need to be water, but it is in my case. If you look down through the tube at any angle, if you see the horizon, the earth is flat, but of course it's not. Let's look at the geometry of the situation that Antonio has described. Now, the blue lines are mine is my tube with another blue line down the center. The height or the diameter of the tube there is H, the length of the tube is L, and Y is the distance that the camera is behind the tube. So this angle that you can see the horizon through is uh, calculated by 10 of the angle is the height over the length of the tube and the distance you are behind the tube. So this could, so this angle here, you can, this is the field of view that you're allowing your horizon to be in, uh, which is, um, if you want to determine that it's flat, that's totally absurd, because remember this line here is your line of sight. Uh, it's pointing at the horizon, uh, at the other, at the other horizon on this side and you're looking down the tube to the another horizon. It, if the Earth was flat, uh, the horizon should be here. But no, Antonio thinks that it can be anywhere in this uh, area that you can tilt the camera to, which is obviously an absurdity and a contradiction of the horizon rising to eye level. And if the horizon rose to eye level, these, these line here would be directly in line with the horizon on uh, both sides because your eye level would be there. Now, if you were to put your camera at the center of the tube, the eye level would be at the center of the tube. But no, that's not what he's done in this case. And so let's move on to a little bit of math here. Uh, this is called uh, geometry, Antonio, and I, and I, I understand that you may be familiar with this so you won't have too much trouble with this and geometry and trigonometry and so if i'm i estimated that uh, my camera was about one meter behind the tube so why is one meter the length of the tube is 750 millimeters the height or the diameter of the tube is 35 millimeters and that gives us an angle of 1.18 degrees as the total field of view that you can see through this tube from one meter away. Now, as you can see, the um, field of view is dependent on the distance behind the tube as well as the dimensions of the tube. So if you want to use this criteria for determining if the Earth is flat or not, you can be dishonest about it and um, uh, manipulate the dimensions of the tube and how far away you are behind. And and you can adjust these things until you can see any horizon that you can observe on a, on on our globe, uh, uh, and you can see it through the tube. 
I mean, just imagine if you had a tube that was six inches in diameter. Uh, you could see almost down to the bottom of uh, the hill you were standing on. So you can, this is uh, an absurd and totally dishonest way of determining flat Earth. Um, because if the Earth were flat, the horizon would be along the eye level line. And, and not with this dip angle here, which in the, in this case, it could be as much as 1.18 degrees. And the whole point of the experiment is to, is to prove that the horizon does not dip. So you cannot allow the camera to tilt like that. Antonio, you're an idiot. Now, um, I'll move on to the next slide, which you remember this. Now, this is how Antonio says that we can we can distinguish flat from globe. This should be a an angle downwards to the horizon there. Now, if you look through your tube and you can look down at a 1.18 degrees in my case, then how are you going to tell the difference between flat and globe? Well, no, that defeats the whole purpose of the experiment. But Antonio had to do this because the experiment didn't turn out the way he wanted. So he had to make it invalid. Now, the, this, the expected drop in this case uh, was, I've worked out, as 0 0.3 degrees. So he, this is not to scale, of course. It's for illustration. But that's a scale there of approximately 38 times. So if I drew overlay on that, this is uh, the red line. Here is what it would look from if I stood two meters behind my tube, then in relation to 0 0.4, uh, 0 0.3 degrees, this is what on this scale this line would look like. And one meter behind my tube, this blue line is what it would look like. So if you're trying to think that, if you're trying to demonstrate the Earth is flat, what Antonio is saying is that you can see a one horizon on this side along this line, and another horizon, if you can see another horizon along this line, the, uh, he's saying that the Earth would be flat. Well, anyway, we've, I'm, I'm going to now demonstrate how Antonio has proved the globe. He's cherry picked this observation. You can clearly see that the horizon is in the center of the tube. So if we do the maths on that, you, I've drawn a red line where he's looking through the tube with the camera uh, roughly at the top. So let's see, the camera is like at, almost at the top of the tube, looking down through the center. The horizon is at the center of the tube. So the angle in this case is half that angle there, which is 0 0.59 degrees. Now this represents two times the horizon drop because the remember the other end is pointing at the horizon and this end is pointing up. So two times the horizon drop is 0 0.59 degrees. That means we, Antonio here has measured a horizon drop of 0 0.295 degrees and the horizon drop that we expect from this height of 97 meters is 0 0.318 degrees. So thank you Antonio for proving the globe.